What's going on guys? Today in this video, I'm going to be showing you guys how I made this simple bioactive enclosure for my red-eyed crocodile skin. Stay tuned. All right, so you have to excuse my voice. I'm a little bit sick right now, so I don't know if you guys are hearing it. I'm kind of congested on the camera or anything or not. But the reason why I need to make a new enclosure for my crocodile skin, see he's currently in an 18 by 18 by 24. It's fully bioactive and it's doing great and everything. But one of my crested geckos is getting big enough to the point where I need to move her to a much larger enclosure. And rather than keep them in something about this size, which is again, working great, they don't need a lot of space. And I've noticed and learned that um, when they're in a larger environment, they don't seem to thrive as well. So. Basically what I'm gonna do is just switch everything over to here so he's got a little bit of a longer space and then make this into my Crested Gecko's new enclosure and probably just do a background and, and everything on there. So that's the main reason and then I could save some money um, not having to buy a new enclosure or everything. All right, so to get this build started, I got a little bit of great stuff foam here. I'm honestly not a fan of great stuff. I've had a lot of not good luck with it. Um, and pass build, but since this is not going to be a large build, uh, this should suffice just fine. So what we're going to go ahead and do is just go ahead and apply the foam all along, which is going to be in my original backdrop. All right, so I've got my first layer of foam, which is this is gonna be the back of the enclosure. Now I gotta do the sides here, so I gotta let this dry for a bit, and then I'm gonna go ahead and get the sides all um, foamed up over here. Okay guys, so we let this cure overnight for dog uh, yeah, overnight 24 hour period. So now we're gonna begin the part that I actually hate the most and it's carving, because I'm really notoriously bad at it. Um, as you can see, I kind of started over here. What essentially we're doing, as you can see how this is kind of like shiny, what you wanna do is we're just removing this top layer and now you can see it's more texturized underwards. And what that's gonna do is allow us to put our silicone, which will adhere better with the peat moss that we're gonna put on. So I'll just go ahead and get this all done. And basically we're gonna carve every single shiny piece around the entire um, cage. And then we'll come back in and I'll kind of show you the finished product after that. Okay guys, so we got everything all texturized. Um, it doesn't look the greatest, like I said, I'm not really the best at doing this part, but now we can begin getting all the silicone onto this texturized foam, and that way we can then add peat moss to it. Um, there's different options, obviously, what you want if you want to use something different for the side substrate or whatever, the uh, actual background itself, but I like the color of peat moss and it holds humidity well, so I'm gonna go ahead and use that. So. We got a hole poked in there, add this into our cock gun. And then now, all we gotta do is get this thing to work. Hold on, fat. <laughs> okay, we're back. <laughs> so, after we do that, we'll just go ahead and get all this silicone. And we're just gonna get a hefty, that layer. Now, there's different ways to spread the silicone on. Um, I found that the best way for me is to just put a really hefty amount of it and just spread it with your hands. So I'll go ahead and fast forward through all this stuff. You gotta get the gist of what's gonna happen here. Okay, so we got a way around the back uh, background or backdrop, I should say, of the enclosure. Now we're gonna go ahead and add our peat moss to it. Um, something you gotta know is you're gonna miss some spots and that's perfectly okay because you can just go back and fill them in later. So I'm never too picky about this stuff. 
because um, you're going to make mistakes doing it. It's not going to be perfect, but you can always just go back later on. Now that we got the peat moss on, we're just going to press it down firmly and that way it'll get a good stick and kind of fill in the gaps and the holes within the expanding foam itself. Okay, so I went ahead and lifted it up. And once you get the pat, you see how it comes off and you hit the back here, you're gonna have stuff come up and you're gonna miss some spots here. But again, it doesn't have to be perfect because you can just go back and patch it again. So I'll go ahead and get these other sides done and kind of fill up some other areas. And then we'll show you guys what this whole finished product of the backdrop looks like. Alrighty guys, so we got all the sides all up here with uh, our peat moss around there. We do have a couple of little patchy areas, but you know, it's not a big deal, so I'm not too worried about it. So the next step is gonna be preparing the whole bioactive component. So I got my clay balls here. I ordered these off of Amazon. Um, you can order them from pet stores online that sell this for bioactive supplies. Amazon, I believe Home Depot will have them too. You can also use different products such as lava rocks, which I heard some people do in their, their personal potting plants. Um, I'm just gonna use these because I have these available and it'll make everything a little bit more neat looking. So this will act as the drainage layer for water. Now I'm gonna go outside and go ahead and give this a good rinse real quick and then we'll go ahead and add this into the tank. Okay, clay balls have been all rinsed off. So now we're just gonna go ahead and not try to make a mess here. evenly across the enclosure. That's what it looks like here. Okay, that looks perfect. We'll move on to the next step. Okay, next order of business, I got some window screen here that I purchased from Home Depot. The idea of this is if you watch any other bioactive enclosure build, it's going to separate the substrate layer from the drainage layer here so that plants or whatever, or soil's not getting into the drainage layer. This step isn't necessary, however, I prefer to do it just because it makes it a little bit easier when it comes to spot cleaning. If you ever have to spot clean or pull anything out, um, or you don't have a, it's not creating the stagnant type uh, substrate that's getting within the clay itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and measure out an area that's a little bit bigger than the cage. And we're gonna go ahead and cut that off of the window screen here. And that will act as our barrier. Okay, next order of business, I have some horticultural co uh, charcoal here, which I'm gonna add before I add the substrate because this is gonna serve as a good medium for the springtails that I'm gonna be putting in here. Um, obviously, again, a lot of people don't do this. You don't have to, but there's a little extra thing I wanna do so that all of the cleanup here that is in here can thrive. Now, again, this isn't a really good enclosure. I, I put it together really quickly. Um, I kind of skipped a lot of the things that I should have done to make it better. Um, for one, I had these little flower holders or pots that I was going to put into the background. I completely forgot to do that and I wanted to put some wood pieces and stuff along the background. That way it will look more natural than it does right now. It's still look good in the end, but it just could have been a little bit better. But uh, that's just stuff I can use on for my next build. So go ahead and finish this up and then we will get Substrate. Okay guys, so for the substrate, it's gonna be very simple. Um, you got multiple different options, but you know, 
I want to do something that's going to hold a good fair amount of humidity for the crocodile skink. So they come from Papua New Guinea, which is actually the same place I think where Crested Gecko is from. So we're going to be using organic topsoil, no fertilizers in there. Just add a couple handfuls of that. We're going to be using some more peat moss, which has sphagnum moss in there. Handfuls of that. And then finally, we're gonna add a little bit of cypress mulch. Just so it gives a more texturized wood undergrowth there. And we're gonna go ahead and mix that all thoroughly up. And that will be our substrate layer. All right, substrate is all ready to go. So we're just gonna go right for it. Um, red eye crocodile skins are not necessarily arboreal in any way, so I don't have any risk of really having skin because I'm going to have a white and a cage on top of this. Um, I'm going to mess, but let's go ahead and get a nice thorough layer. And now, the reason why I didn't put the foam all the way to the bottom is that so the substrate can have a spot to go. Cool. Alright. That looks good to me. Go ahead and just make sure that looks all spread around. And that should complete our substrate layer. Okay guys, so I had some sheet moss hanging around. So what I did is I patched up some of the areas where the foam was showing through with some sheet moss, which can add a little bit more humidity, makes it look a little bit more jungle-like, so it just looks better in my opinion. So now I'm currently in the process of moving over the plant from here. Um, I'm not gonna put the snake plant in here, it's way too big. So my girlfriend has some pothos here that she gave me and I'm gonna end up planting that here instead. It'll grow fast. Um, and I don't know what this plant's called, but I've already started planting it in here. But yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and just pick some spots in here and add some hardscape and then we'll show you guys kind of what the finished product looks like. All right, everyone, so we got our plants in here. Um, those should grow out here evenly and nicely coming up. I'm gonna be adding some more hardscape and cover for him as well, but next I'm gonna be adding my cleanup crew. So here I just have temperate springtails that I culture myself. So what I'm just gonna do is, we got a ton of them here. Just place that in the soil and that should go nicely. Just bury them up, they'll be perfectly fine and they already have a perfect medium to start getting to work. In terms of my isopods, I am going to use, I'm just only gonna transfer this piece of cork bark over because I have Porcelio Labus orange and Porcelio Labus dairy cow isopods that I will use. Now they are a more protein hungry species. You can see my dubia roaches here that he hasn't eaten. Um, they are more protein hungry species. However, he hunts these quite often, so I don't have any worries about that. Um, if you're not really sure, if you're more like a soft bodied animal, I'd recommend using powdered oranges, dwarf whites. Dwarf whites are probably one of the best ones you can use because they are the smallest um, considered cleanup crew more type isopod. These guys do a great job too, um, but we're gonna go ahead and just transfer this over because it already has some food on here for him. It already has the cleanup crew, so let's get that over and we should be good. All right guys, so we got just about everything all set up. Got his water bowl, got some cork bark for him to hide in. Got the plant set up in the background. I'm gonna go ahead and just add a little bit of some sphagnum moss that I have. This is dried right now, so what I'm gonna do is just place it in and then wet it. So we'll probably add some inside this cork bark tube here and it'll expand a little bit as we um, rehydrate it. And then after that is done, all that's left to do is add our crocodile skin. So let me go ahead and wet this down real quick and I'll go grab them. 
Okay, so I just want to make this quickly because these are very shy animals, but this is my red-eyed crocodile skink here. He's been doing great in the little over a year I had him, um, but they do not like to be handled, so um, he's just a little, I guess, showing of him. Now we're just going to go ahead and drop him in. And I'm sure he'll just go straight into hiding. Yep, there he goes. All in all, I'm super happy with how this turned out. Um, even though it's a very small cage, it does have a lot of a naturalistic vibe to it. I think he'll feel really secure as, as these plants grow in as well. Having this little background just makes everything 100 times better in my opinion. Um, so yeah, now all I got left to do is I'm gonna clean out this cage and we are going to make a new bioactive. And this time I swear I'll be a lot more patient and make it a lot more thorough and better and have some more um, other ways I can put plants. And we're gonna be moving one of my crested geckos into this cage. So that way we save money, don't have to buy another cage. But all in all, I think this thing looks great. Um, I do need to get, so what, actually what I've been using for my plant light has been just a ZooMed UVB bulb and it's actually worked great. The plants have been thriving, but I am gonna go ahead and probably get an Arcadia Jungle Dawn. Um, I think it's the Jungle Dawn that is used for plants as well. But yeah, I'll leave you guys out with a couple shots of this and thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Oh, mm -hmm.